Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, I always like coming here to Pagun uh, uh, to see familiar faces, but also to learn new stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy also to contribute with this talk. So I'll talk about. Uh, uh, so I'll talk about uh, Mojo, and uh, at least uh, uh, I think it has the potential to be to become the new Python 4. So uh, I want to uh, tell you a little bit uh, about what it's about. Okay. So briefly, this is the outline of my talk. So I'll first uh, discuss some of the short uh, shortcomings of Python. And uh, then um, uh, Mojo aims to fix these problems. So I'll also highlight uh, the, uh, the essentials of Mojo. Uh, I think it's also fun to have a look at the sign text. So uh, we'll go through, uh, through a few uh, new additions uh, to the Python language. Uh, but st yeah, it's still in the development. It's quite new. So there are still some shortcomings. So I'll uh, highlight some of the, uh, the problems uh, yeah, for Mojo in its current form. And just a few wrap up, and we have some time for questions. So yeah, we're all Python developers here, so I think everybody knows uh, yeah, don't write uh, uh, loops in Python. So uh, uh, also for newcomers, uh, you also try to teach them uh, use libraries, uh, use built-in functions, but don't write uh, loops yourself. Um, and it's uh, partly related to uh, this other shortcoming of Python is that it's uh, it's developed in the 90s, in the early 90s, uh, but back then hardware was different, so it was also developed with this hardware in mind. So uh, yeah, back then we had CPUs with only one core. Uh, as far as I know, uh, 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 GPUs were not uh, available, or at least not widely available. And so this language was designed uh, with this in mind. And uh, now we're stuck uh, with the a global interpreter lock, which does the which does the memory bookkeeping for Python, but it uh, as a result we're now uh, Python always runs on one thread, so that's also yeah a limitation in terms of uh, speed, and so in practice we uh, end up with an ecosystem uh, of libraries that contains uh, yeah C plus plus and uh, CUDA code. I think all the uh, most widely used libraries like uh, NumPy, SciPy, TensorFlow, PyTorch, they're mostly just C++ and CUDA libraries with some Python wrapping on top. So I think there's a clear, clearly indicates the, the limitations of Python. And uh, Mojo tries to fix these, uh, yeah, these flaws of uh, Python. So it's a, uh, it's a compiled language. It is a type language, so it, you use types for your variables. But I think what is important to uh, to indicate is that it tries to, at least it is not uh, in its current form, but it tries to be a superset of Python. So I indicated that in the Venn diagram. Uh, so uh, it adds on top of Python. And uh, so if you uh, want to use, use the new features, then you can. And if you don't, if you want to stay in Python, that's that's perfectly fine. So uh, it's it's opt-in. You get to choose uh, whether you uh, use these new features, and so it adds also uh, a, a low-level features uh, that are uh, yeah more in uh, more from the C++ uh, language, so that you get to get more control of memory and uh, and stuff like that. So uh, as far as as I understand it, it's in essence, it's just a, a, an, a front-end. The Mojo language is a front-end for the multi-level intermediate representation. So uh, that is just a way of uh, compilers uh, uh, turning a language into a machine code. And the multi-level intermediate representation is just a, a, yeah, a step in between, which keeps some of the important concepts uh, that you want to optimize over. And because all the, the, the people from NVIDIA and so on, they also uh, uh, develop their GPUs, they, they develop libraries uh, also for uh, MLER, it's, it's easy to see that uh, you can then just natively use all this uh, technology uh, with the uh, Mojo language. And so it, it's, uh, in, in practice, it's a fast language. So there's also examples, for example, 
of uh, Llama 2 is that there was a C++ implementation and they also did a Mojo implementation and it actually was faster than C++. So it's really... Uh, and there's also fancy uh, technology to use your hardware optimally. So you can imagine if you have a large uh, stack of hardware, you have CPUs, you have GPUs, you have uh, uh, yeah, hardware in between to connect these things. And uh, yeah, each hardware is different. So you can imagine that if you want to use your, your uh, registers optimally, it depends on your hardware. And uh, Mojo can just uh, figure out what is the best for your specific hardware, what's the best way to tile the memory to get maximum performance. So these are just uh, nice features. So that having said, let's, let's look at uh, some syntax. Uh, so one of the things they introduce is uh, 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 the var keyword to define variables. So as I said, it's a uh, module is opt-in, so you don't have to use these new language features, but you can if you want to. But all the, the, the other new uh, features they introduce, uh, they, also, they rely on this uh, var uh, definition of variables. And now you need to type uh, uh, your variables. So for example, on the first line where we indicate uh, for uh, foo is bar, then it automatically infers that it's a string. But you uh, sometimes you cannot directly infer from it. Uh, and you can also, uh, you don't have to directly initialize it uh, using Python. So in Python, you uh, yeah you define a variable by by initializing it so that's that's different from uh, uh, the var uh, keyword and another th new thing uh, that's uh, yeah not familiar with standard Python is that they introduce parameters and uh, for those familiar with C++ you can think of it like a, a templating and uh, so uh, yeah you um, it helps you for example to uh, write generic uh, classes, and then you uh, just specify what kind of types you have, and then during compilation, the compi compiler is aware that you want to have this specific uh, type, and then it compiles uh, for that specific type. So then it's constant during runtime, but uh, it's inferred during compilation. And for example, here is an example. Uh, this is a, a list, and it's composed of uh, unsigned integer uh, 32. So they uh, put the uh, uh, parameters in brackets. So we'll see that uh, more clearly next. Uh, so another um, innovation, uh, so new thing they added is the uh, compiled functions. And so you indicated that with the fn uh, keyword. And here you have to indicate for each argument, you have to indicate what kind of type it is and also for the return value. And uh, as I said, not only do you have arguments, but you also have uh, parameters. And so these are indicated in brackets. And so here we uh, define a variable uh, times, which is the uh, parameter. And it has a default uh, value. And then, um, yeah, you can use it as, as if you, as it would have been a normal uh, argument. But the different difference is, is now that during compilation, it is fixed. So the compiler can actually enroll this loop uh, uh, during compilation uh, because it's known at uh, compile time. So if you, uh, if you don't specify this uh, a parameter, then it just takes the default value. So then it runs the loop only once. But you can also specify, for example, times is two, and then it, it rolls out this loop uh, two times. And then this is compiled into uh, two instructions. Um, also uh, different uh, for the fn function is that you can do offloading. Uh, so uh, yeah, especially if you li write libraries, then you might want to uh, yeah interpret your arg uh, your arguments in different ways. And for example, here is a, uh, is we do interpretations of the variable, for example, like an integer or a string. And uh, how you would do it um, with Mojo because it's a uh, typed, uh, you would just write an implementation for each uh, each type. So for example, uh, the equivalent would be that you specify that it's an integer and it returns an integer and then uh, similar for the string. And then the, uh, the language automatically knows that if I pass in an integer, then I must uh, use the overloaded function that 
that works for integers and uh, similarly for strings. Uh, next up is the struct. Uh, so yeah, you can think of it like a uh, compiled uh, class. So uh, in Python, you can add, uh, later on, you can add a new uh, argument uh, parameters, you can add new methods, uh, but this is not the case for a struct, so it's fixed. And then, uh, yeah, during compilation, but then, uh, yeah, then you get the bonus of speed. And uh, what is different is that now you have to define your, uh, for example, your parameters using var, so it's a variable. And similarly, like uh, classes, you have constructors. Uh, but uh, one thing to notice is now that you uh, indicate the, uh, the self uh, argument with uh, in out. And that's also a new uh, language feature. And it indicates that actually it, uh, yeah, it's a mutable reference. Uh, but if you just write, uh, uh, yeah, so this constructor is a lot of boilerplate and similarly like data classes in Python, uh, you don't actually um, uh, need to write this explicitly. You can just add uh, a decorator just f for, for you to implement this uh, automatically. And you just use it as you, you normally would uh, with the classes. Uh, so yeah, I think that should be familiar. So I already uh, showed the uh, uh, in-out uh, keyword. And uh, Mojo tries to also add uh, low-level uh, uh, features for if, if you like. And um, yeah, I still remember from my high school days uh, being tortured with uh, segmentation faults and memory errors. So I still have this latent fear for C++. Uh, but uh, luckily, uh, yeah, Languages have evolved, and now they add guardrails to ensure uh, memory safety. And so these are three elements uh, that are introduced. Uh, uh, borrowed, so it means that you get an uh, immutable reference. So uh, look, but don't touch. Uh, in out, so that means that you get an, uh, a reference, but you can, can mutate the variable. And owned, that should be familiar for uh, Python. This is the default for uh, dev uh, functions. And let's just have a look at uh, an example. So here we indicate that uh, the variable is owned. So that uh, means like uh, in normal Python, you just uh, initialize it, then you, yeah, you pass this argument to the function and then yeah, the original value is not, uh, not changed because the function takes ownership uh, of this uh, variable. But if we use an in-out, it means that you uh, get a mutable reference. So if we first initialize x with 3 and then we use the add1 function, then uh, it becomes incremented by 1. Um, yeah, so they try to be a superset. Uh, I think we're, yeah, the language is not that far uh, just yet. Uh, but they, they introduce lots of ways to uh, integrate with existing Python uh, modules and so on. And uh, yeah, it's actually what they did is quite, uh, quite a clever way. So they, they wrapped all these modules using the, uh, the CPython interpreter. So when you just use the uh, normal Python code in, in Mojo, actually you're just running the Python interpreter. So uh, here's how you would use it uh, in practice. Here I use uh, NumPy. I make a NumPy array, and so uh, this first statement is basically like a top-level import, uh, but Mojo does not yet support top-level import, so uh, yeah, you have to define it as a variable. And then you, as usual, you just uh, use this uh, uh, package to make variables and do your standard Python code. So this is how that works. Uh, uh, yeah, a thing to notice is that here you now also need to indicate that this function can raise exceptions. So that is not the uh, the default. And then you, of, of course, also incur a performance penalty if you want to be able to capture this. Well, the language has much, much more stuff. Uh, for example, also hardware-backed factors. Frankly, I've never heard about it before uh, learning about this language. But it's, it's quite cool, actually. So uh, the CPU uh, apparently can uh, do using a, a single instruction, multiple operations. So for example, for this 
uh, this for uh, item vector. But if you do uh, this, uh, the square element, uh, it does the square for each of these elements using just a single CPU instruction. And so you can ma imagine that this is like uh, four times faster than uh, doing four times uh, a multiplication. Uh, yeah, if you want, you can also use pointers. Uh, you can be uh, unsafe, uh, allocate memory, and then forget about freeing them. Yeah, if, if you're into that so sort of stuff, you're happy to use it. But uh, yeah, but if you want to be safe like me, then you can use all the uh, guardrails that is provided with in, out, borrowed, and so on. Um, yeah, it's still uh, a language in development. So uh, there are quite uh, some shortcomings. Uh, yeah, for example, the language is just, uh, yeah, the Python language itself is just half finished. So they don't yet uh, uh, support the class um, keyword, the yield uh, keyword. You cannot unpack uh, tuples. So there are lots of things that are not yet supported, but of course they, they plan to do so in the future. Um, yeah. I, I also uh, played around uh, a little bit uh, just to learn this language. Uh, so I impl Im implemented a short uh, machine learning algorithm. But uh, yeah, then you really notice that uh, batteries uh, are not included. So uh, I ended up uh, having to write a su uh, yeah, substantial portion of uh, PyTorch library just to, to use uh, tensors. And also the standard library itself has lots of uh, missing features, so then you have to write it uh, yourself. So yeah, it's not difficult, but it's <laughs> it's a bit of a nuisance, uh, I would say. Um, yeah, so related is that um, some of these uh, Python objects and native Mojo uh, objects, they uh, they don't talk to each other just yet. So you also have to convert uh, Python list to uh, mojo list, but I think this will be resolved in the in the future. Uh, there's also no, not a package manager like pip just yet, so they're working on it as I as I understand. So it's supposed to be released uh, released soon. So that hopefully uh, makes life also easier uh, that people solve some of the ex existing problems themselves and you just import it. And uh, uh, for those uh, for whom uh, open source is important, so they they want to make the language completely open source, but they do so in gradual steps. So now the standard library is open source, but the c compiler is not yet. So uh, they claim that, that they want to make uh, uh, the entire uh, system open source, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see, I guess. Um, so this is basically the, uh, yeah, brings me to the conclusions. So, uh, yeah, Mojo is, uh, I hope you take away that it's a compiled language and it's a type language. And it, it's designed for, uh, yeah, for the world we live in now. So we live in a world where there are GPUs, where uh, CPUs have multiple cores, and we want to use them without uh, uh, writing CUDA code and so on. And Mojo tries to, uh, to address this. Uh, it's an opt-in language where you it can stay. You can just write the uh, Python language uh, as you would uh, normally, and then it should, in theory, uh, work fine. And then if you want to use these uh, new features that bring speed, then you can opt in for these features. But it's still early days, and when I played around with it, uh, yeah, I also got a few segmentation faults still. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Also, if security is important, beware. Uh, um, yeah, and some language features are still missing. So, uh, yeah, my takeaway is uh, uh, let's let's keep an eye on it, and I think uh, there will be a uh, bright future for Mojo. And that brings me to the end of my talk. Thanks.